carbon-14 atoms that decay while it was alive, and so it's a, a steady state. But when it dies, it stops replacing that carbon-14, and it decays. So I'm going to show the decay here. You know, so birth, death, now, carbon-14 ratio uh, versus time. So we can use carbon-14 to calculate. You know, if we see this much carbon-14 in the creature today, uh, and just extrapolate back to a known level, whatever level it had when it was alive, then we can get the time of its death. That's how carbon-14 dating works. And uh, usually, uh, the recent carbon-14 dates are just dated by using that one out of a trillion ratio I mentioned. But has that initial ratio always been the same? No, the answer is no. Uh, and how can I be so sure of that? Uh, it's because of fossils. Fossils have a low carbon-14 carbon, regular carbon ratio. So here is percent of modern carbon, carbon-14 carbon, the ratio. So it's the percentage of that one out of a trillion. Uh, and this is measured today. And uh, this is the number of samples. So you'll find this chart and others like it in John Baumgartner's uh, chapter of the great volume two book. And uh, the data for it is there. So uh, the average is somewhere around here, say 0.25 or so. Uh, the average, uh, but that's today. And uh, uh, these things uh, were buried in the flood about 4,500 years ago, according to the Hebrew chronology in the Bible with no gaps. So uh, what was it then? You have to multiply by about 1.7 to get uh, So it's measured in all sorts of things, coal and wood and shells, bone, marble, CO2, natural gas, and oil. And, uh, but as I said, you have to multiply by 1.7 get the average ratio back then. So it was, turns out it was about half a percent of today's ratio. So that's a good figure to remember. And uh, so the Earth, there's no reason to think that any uh, carbon-14 of significance was generated during the flood. I may be wrong about that. But uh, assuming there wasn't much, uh, then uh, right after the flood, the Earth started off this low value. Now, I'm going to show you a graph, and I'll, I'll show it to you in brief now, and near the end of the talk, I'll walk it through again. But here's time, here's the present time, and here's the time of the flood, here's that ratio, carbon 14 to regular. And the ratio in air today is here. So uh, if you were a strict uniformitarian and thought that uh, uh, that ratio has never changed throughout the whole time, then you would draw this line back here. But uh, even the uniformitarians uh, don't do that. Uh, they have something they call the calibration curve. Now, I'll talk much more about this uh, near the end of the talk, but it's based upon tree rings. <coughs> the amount of carbon-14 they find in each ring. So they get uh, uh, more, they, they think the ratio was higher in the past. So how does that affect their day? Here's how they date it. They just extrapolate from the ratio now and just extrapolate with the decay time of carbon-14. It has about a 5,700-year half-life. They just extrapolate back to this point and uh, then that's the uniformitarian of day. Now, here's our half a percent down here. Uh, and the, so the ratio in air is going to be a blue curve, and it looks like this. So this is what everyone uh, who works in this field who's a creationist pretty much thinks, I, I believe. Uh, and the curve had the 
reach about 90% of today's value uh, by a thousand years after the flood, about the time of Moses. So somewhere here, uh, just by comparing the carbon 14 dates we get from artifacts and their, their date, comparing them uh, with what we get. So uh, now, there's another, that's how we, how we date it. So we, if we take account of that curve, then we took account of, of where of, that the initial uh, amount was lower. So the real date is, you know, a few hundred years after the flood in this case. So let's see what else to tell you. Oh, um, there's the large jump that I've been talking about. <coughs> And here is something called delta carbon-14 by the workers. It's the deviation from uh, strict uniformity, uniformity to their curve. And uh, you'll find plots of that in the literature. And I'm going to show you a piece of such a plot right now. And uh, the bottom line of the plot is that solar activity can cause carbon-14 curves. So here's the deviation from uh, uh, the one out of one trillion ratio, the deviation in percent. So we're going to zero percent, minus one percent, plus one percent, and so on. And here is the tree ring year, the year you get by counting up the tree rings, <coughs> counting backwards. Uh, but I put that in quotes, you notice, because uh, the year you get that way is is based upon assuming only one tree ring form per year. And I, I think uh, that's generally wrong through the ice age. Uh, and how much wrong we need to discuss. So anyhow, but in the tree ring carbon-14, there's this bump and also a dip. I won't go into why there's a dip, but there's a bump of about 1%. You, uh, they pretty much figure this is due to this solar activity, and the, the timing is about right for uh, uh, when the solar sun is active. Uh, I'll tell you much more about that. And then these are taken from German oaks and Irish oaks and uh, Bristol Cone Pine.